says, every gentleman say hello. What's up? Can everybody hear me? <laughs> You're about to blow my eardrums out when oh, you uh, lower your mic there for a second. Can you hear second. me now? I, I can hear you, man. Worse than a Verizon commercial. Mr. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are we good? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Because <laughs> that was a finger, but the wrong finger I was looking for. <laughs> The wrong finger? Do you, you, have, you have that effect on people? Uh, as always, whatever we talk about today, Mr. Ochoa, tell them what number can they reach us at for them to call in. See, this time I'm ready. It's 800-405-6425. And you can also do it live through Facebook and Twitter. As Mr. Ochoa is sitting on the board, while we talk on the show, he loves to hear from you. Um, any of the rude comments that go back and the misspellings are because he's a high school dropout. Well, he, he loves hearing himself event. speak more than he, you know, hearing from people, but that's fine. No, no, no. You know what? In all fairness, though, I, I got to let me just say this. We'll give a shout out to him. Arvin has not slept in probably two weeks getting everything ready back for the shows to come back live. I've I don't, never seen anybody text, type, and do more for something that two people are listening to in my entire life. <laughs> It's one of the listeners falling out. You know, out of everything you heard, all I all, all I heard was for those of you that do it live. All I gotta say is I'm always doing it live. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. We're gonna get into a few topics today. Uh, one of the ones I wanted to pick up last week on. We had a few great callers. I want to thank them if they're available. Please feel free to call in. Uh, we talked about monopolies last week, and no, not the board game, and no, not Ghettoopoly. I do want to thank. What was his name, Arvin? Evan, Evan, Evan for Reckon. calling in last night. We will not be talking about Get Alpha tonight. But All right. Evan, I hope you got your t-shirt. We mailed it out. Um, just to show you what kind of power the three guys rant have, we bring up the topic of Sprint uh, being upset that AT&T and T-Mobile want to merge and form the uh, nation's largest cell phone company. And what do we hear this morning, gentlemen? The government's stepping in. Of course they are. So it may not happen. Well, I didn't hear about that. I heard about the snakes on the plane, but okay. We can go with that. <laughs> snakes on the plane, huh? Mr. Ochoa? Enlighten us. I mean, you know what? You, you jumped you, you, you jumped the shark. Let's go. What about snakes on a plane? Tell us. That there was no snakes allowed on a plane. You guys didn't hear about this? That this guy had like five snakes in his pants and like two snapping turtles trying to get on the on a plane? <laughs> so you say stop them? Okay. Only two snapping turtles? Two snapping turtles. One up each That's <laughs> One uh, up each leg. That's messed up, man. Normally I only travel with one snake in my pants. <laughs> Snapping turtles don't go anywhere in there. And the problem with his uh, traveling snake is it's a strap-on. So well, that, that's, that, that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. He got caught in the pat-down. He wow. just did something look wrong. Something <laughs> looked wrong. <laughs> you know, I guess that's why you can't be wearing MC Hammer pants in this day and age, man. It does uh, jerk up a thing. But, again, I did want to share that for everybody who listened. Yeah, apparently uh, we bring it up on the Three Guys Ranch. And look, the government steps in. I know, that's the power of the Three Guys Ranch. Little did we know that somebody that works for the government was parked right in front of the studio and they could hear the show. <laughs> So you see, you never know, you know. Where they, they, where they may be. Exactly. And that deep ending voice was brought to you by? The three guys ran. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as the deep progressed today, I, I, I was, I, I don't know if I was touched or moved, and that sounds bad on so many levels, but several of my associates and friends felt the need over the last 48 hours to share with me, and Mike, I wasn't sure if you were aware of this, but Dick Cheney wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> so, that being said, um, I felt the need, since I don't read well, I look at pictures, but what I've been doing lately is, uh, you know, my wife gave me an iPod for Christmas, or actually, yeah, Mike did, I think, Mike gave me an iPod for Christmas, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a tech junkie, but I've never been, so, I've been down, I've been buying the books, and downloading them through uh, Audible and Amazon, and doing books on tape. I got to tell you that I, got, I spent three hours of my life today that I will never get back. And now I understand why Dick Cheney shot his friend in the face. So you're telling me that you actually listened to that moron's <laughs> Wait a minute, you're saying you need a reason to shoot a friend in, in, in the face? Well, I'm just I got to say, there's, there's at well, least well, once wait, a week. Wait, 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 you know, I'm just saying, when Cheney took his, you know, I don't know if it was his best friend, but one of his friends hunting a few years ago, he accidentally shot him in the face. Accidentally parentheses? Well, you know, I'm going with that. So what I'm saying is after three hours of listening to the book that was so highly recommended to me by several sources, um, I understood why I wanted to shoot myself in the face with a shotgun. You know what's funny is that after that incident, I don't know if you, you guys remember, he did not come out and talk to the cops. You know, the cops showed up, whatever. He said, no, they tell him, oh, no, he'll be available to talk to you uh, tomorrow. I mean, I don't know, you know. I'm going to try that, you know, next time I shoot a friend in the face, the cops show up, and just, no, no, you know, I'll be able to talk to you folks tomorrow, you know, come back. I mean, what crappy crap, man. 
Yeah. So Hector, since you told me to read that steaming pile, I'm just curious, since we now have the Arvin Ochoa Book Club, please enlighten us with your views and takes on the first three chapters of, of said book. I haven't read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. There were many a text and, and, and yes. many... Um, yes, I was one of them. You can say I was one of them. You were one of them you who encouraged me yes. and said that because the greatness of Dick Ch you should, that Those were your examples. I you should need be, to be uh, uh, Edu educated, um, <laughs> but I unfortunately have not been able to purchase the book. I've been preoccupied with something else, so I, 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 I am going to go get it next uh, this weekend. Look, stop using your EBT for food and buy a book. EBT is that for food. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, you were pushing the book right, right hard, right, right, and, and you know what? Because I wanted to find out, you know, what actually. I mean, you know, George Bush came out with a book. Cheney came out with a book. There are some, you know, some differences or some major differences with uh, what happened in the White House during several different issues and several different things that happened. One primarily, the, the, the 9-11. Um, you're most fondly about shooting people in the face. Well, that, that's, that also happened. But I, to be quite honest, I have not purchased a book yet. I have not uh, 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 indulged myself in giving me that, that, that opportunity to go buy it yet. But I definitely will go this week. For shame, Hector, for shame. And yes, it's such yes. a book that you were so looking forward yes, to. Yes, yeah, bending over spanky, that's fine, <laughs> but uh, I have not wow. had the time to go out there and purchase it yet. Now, it's funny you brought up the fact that there are so many discrepancies. According to the LA Times, uh, it just seems that both of their books claim one was in control. And, you know, about the order of shooting down planes. And they went back and forth on that, so it's just kind of I funny how... I think it's how still there. I think, I think that the... The mystery will still continue after you and I, you know, pass on. Um, nobody, nobody will really know. I mean, who knows? Maybe 20 years from now, the truth will finally do, do come out. Maybe they'll open the records in the books and find out, you know, give us, the citizens of this beautiful country, to find out what actually happened. But to be quite honest, and, 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 and I'll be the first one to say, you know, no, one, no one's going to know what actually happened. And, and yes, both, both books, both men giving their own... Uh, view on things. I mean, look what happened when, when JFK died. Look, look what happened when every president has done some stupid thing. You know, somebody comes out, then, you know, somebody comes out writing their own version of what happened, and then you have the actual person who was there doing these things come out with their own version. So it's all skeptical, uh, uh, optimism, pessimism, uh, uh, a bunch of different adjectives that, you know, you won't, you won't know what actually happened. And, I well, mean, I'm going to go with cynicism because... In my lunacy, I also bought Decision Points oh. by George Bush, as I wanted to prepare for today's show because you were so adamant that I should read about your great leaders. i got to tell you that the six out, and I'll, in all fairness and in full disclosure, I also purchased The Audacity of Hope and have not listened to that yet because I was uh, trying to be prepared for uh, Hector here. The six hours that I listened to between Bush and Cheney, my IQ dropped 72 points. And there wasn't that much to drop to begin with. Well, yes. uh, <laughs> you see now, you're as smart as George W. Bush. <laughs> see, see, I, there you go. The book served its, its purpose, man. Making everybody dumber. Now I understand why they say you should read a book. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> to hear your mind is a terrible thing to waste. And what's funny is, your associate who isn't here with us today, Arvin, here's your word of the day, calls to tell me that because Bush was such a great orator, that I should go ahead and buy the book. Oh, well, you know what? I actually heard that last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what does Bush brain have to do with anything, man? Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm simply <laughs> saying that <laughs> I was told to listen to the book, and wow, mind-numbingly bad. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> okay. That's fine. So, so that that that's your stance on that. Yeah, I mean. I, to be quite honest, I, I have not read the book. I, I have not uh, had the time to really engage and, and find out what, what's in that book yet. So give me some time and we'll definitely revisit this uh, So we'll be back to the book club here. Is that what it is? Right. Gonna, so right. next, on, on next week's edition of the Three right. Guys Rant Book Club, we'll, uh, yes. we'll pick up where we we'll left pick off. Up. I mean, I'll finish my Cat in the Hat you know, by tonight, <laughs> hopefully, and then we'll, we'll start up with the Dick Cheney book next week. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because one of the comments that I, I made during a uh, phone conference this afternoon was that, again, I found the book so mind-numbingly bad that I wanted to shoot myself in the face. And one of the comments that was made during the call is, well, no, no, no. Dick Cheney's book 
should be placed up right next to the good book, the Bible. I said about the only place I'm going to put that book is next to my Dr. Seuss collection. So I was, uh, you know, quite, hey, quite hey, enthused to hear you say There you go. There you go. All right. Mr. Well, Mikey, what do you got for us? Well, you know, the, the, as uh, entertaining as all of this has been, one of the things that caught my eye and it actually broke my heart a little bit was uh, that you guys read about that new law that uh, our governor here signed. So now it gives cities the right to regulate uh, medical marijuana dispensaries in different communities, you know. So now the city's going to start coming down to these people and, you know, regulating them as they see fit. Which, you know, I think it's a travesty. Well, but, you, know. you know, it's funny. We talk about travesties, but I just read last week how there's a city in SoCal that had 39 dispensaries with a population of 21,000. Right. Like a great that's, that's great customer service right there. You see, if it was 39 Starbucks, nobody would complain. Oh, 39, 39 pot dispensaries, oh. Crap. Well, I'm just you thinking know. that particular town in SoCal's got to have the you know the lowest cases of glaucoma, and uh, if you drive through that town, you'll see nobody with glasses. <laughs> right. right? Even the dogs, huh? Even the dogs. The people, don't the, the crime rate is zero. Everybody's mellow. They don't fight. They don't argue. There's no drive-bys. Yeah, know? but then you can be wondering what's with this big cloud of smoke just hovering over the city. Yeah, but you know that's it's L.A., dude. It's it's smog. It's gonna be like this, right? It'll blend in. It's gonna be like a Ziggy Marley festival. Yeah. Is there another place to be at than Ziggy Marley Festival? <laughs> you know, so that's uh, that's messed up. I thought. Anyway, that, that's some California news. All right, all right. Hector, you know, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. You know, uh, the other thing that that was kind of messed up, and I was, you know, I was kind of bothered when I was listening to. You know, how the president was going to call a, or he asked for a joint session of Congress uh, for the seventh uh, to talk about his jobs plan, and. Apparently, the uh, Republicans, mainly uh, Boehner, basically decided that, oh, no, that wasn't a good day, you know, because the Congress wouldn't be ready to, you know, host the president that day, so he needed to move it. Coincidentally, that's the same night that the Republican uh, presidential candidates are having a debate. So I'm sure Mr. Boehner's... Uh, didn't have any ulterior motives, you know, <laughs> for moving it. Wow. And it's the first time the president has been... Missed like that, you know. It's like all of a sudden, you know. Oh no, sorry, we can't have you here. But aren't they saying also you know? though that it was a move by the president to try and offset some of the attention on yes. the debate? Well, here's the thing. I don't know how many people are going to be watching the debates. I don't know if the uh, unemployed are going to be watching the the field of clowns that the Republicans got up there right now. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm sure they would have been more interested in hearing what the government had to say about jobs. You know, the Republicans came into office talking about jobs, 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 jobs. They haven't proposed one bill yet. That's a job creating bill, and here comes the president. He wants to propose something, and it's just an opportune day. And, and what do you think he's going to propose? I don't know, but it, precisely nothing. Uh, but the good thing is, it's going to be whatever he proposes what is, is he more than propose? the Republicans have proposed. What are you going to propose? <laughs> that the census, that the census workers are going to so, come back to work again to take the census? Come on, hey, please. Let's be realistic. It's going to create jobs. He you listen to the three guys react on AdviceRadio.com. We're going to go to our break. first break. We'll be right back. Please stick around. Can you hear it? Because somebody over here took my. Can okay. we see? Are, are those working over there? Any of those work? Well, we started late today, so I'm running the brakes at, at the 15 mark from when we started. Okay. That's all you're going So if uh, well, let's you guys were like looking at it like. Oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I just work? follow the music. I don't look at the clock. Okay, so the next one's going to be 8.32 then if you guys. Perfect. Yeah, cool. So I, I'm following. So you guys are over at 9.02 today. Excellent. Does it work? So, so that way, yeah, so that way it's a full yeah. hour. I'll Perfect. leave this door open so that way like, the cold air comes in. Thank you, sir. Mexican American marinated. Are you hearing this commercial? I think they're talking about you. Who is this, Harvey? This isn't me. Los Boyos? Let's go find out. Downey. It's Los Boyos. Who? Los Pollos. It wasn't me. I didn't bring them. Got to talk about Los Pollos when they come there.
get a call from uh, Meruelo, from Alex. He wants to have a meeting with uh, Hesse. No kidding. I'm like, well, why doesn't one CEO go talk to the other CEO? Why do they need him? Well, because he really doesn't know him that well. And can you help us? What do I get out of it? Well, what do you want? Well, how's about, uh, I don't know, one week in a month at your uh, Reno uh, location? <coughs> Make that happen.